So, good afternoon. Thanks for uh, letting me speak today uh, for a few minutes. What I wanted to talk about was a topic that I think will resonate uh, with this group after looking at the agenda, and that is really the value of partnerships when it comes to uh, addressing public health issues here and around the world. And in order to do that, I thought it would be helpful to set the context because someone being with the pharmaceutical industry for a long time, you know, we weren't early embracers of the partnership concept. We were a quite insular industry for many years, and we suffered from the not invented here syndrome. But to do that, I thought I'd explain it in the context of an industry that we can all probably relate better to. So you're probably thinking, you know, why am I putting up a slide on Star Wars for a discussion about global health partnerships? Besides being a movie buff, I, I almost went with Lord of the Rings, but I decided to go with Star Wars. Um, if, you, if you're like me, you go to the movies, you've seen uh, changes in the opening credits. You know, it used to be 10 years ago you'd see a movie by 21st Century Fox. Today it's 21st Century Fox in association with Touchtone, in partnership with Lionsgate, in partnership with Bad Robot Pictures. And it made me think about you know, how, why is that, and is there some analogy to what we're going through in, in the pharmaceutical sector? And there are, and I'll just give you a few uh, factors that, that help illustrate our evolution to embrace uh, the, a more partnership mindset. And one is, they're both really high-risk, high-reward industries, and anyone in a high-risk, high-reward industry wants to mitigate risk and spread it out across as many programs as possible, and partnering helps us to do that. The other factor is, we rely on innovations and technology, and innovations from niche companies that develop new breakthrough technologies. In Star Wars, it's probably computer-generated imagery and special effects. In our industry, it's gene therapies and other types of uh, novel technologies around biomarkers. It's also, the third one is, it's also expensive to develop blockbusters. Um, you know, the first Star Wars cost $11 million. The Rogue One cost $200 million to produce. To develop a new medicines, the cost used to be estimated at around a billion dollars. Now it's over $2 billion. So, you know, those are the factors that move this in this, this direction. What's driving it today is simple complexity. Complexity of the science, complexity of the challenges. And I'm going to walk you through a few examples uh, to, to illustrate that. So obviously the science is, is, is advancing to the point where it's extremely complex. The diseases that we're trying to, track, to tackle now, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, you know, uh, different forms of cancers using immunotherapy are really difficult to develop uh, treatments and cures. And the days where a single company discovered, developed, and brought to market a drug is over. It's very much a partnership culture now, relying on different areas of expertise across the system. Our example is our Centers for Therapeutic Innovation, where we've really attempted to develop a real new model of partnerships where we work together with uh, academic institutions across the country, the NIH, disease foundations, in a new model that's really a partnership. We actually have our scientists sitting side by side in a lab with scientists from academic institutions. They're both expected to contribute knowledge. They're both accepted, uh, expected to share the risks, share the rewards, and if anything comes out of it, they share the intellectual property that comes out of it. So it's a true partnership. We have them in mostly in biomedical hubs. We have one here in Boston. We have one in San Francisco, and we have one in New York City. And in the last few years, we've had 31 programs where we've really tried to accelerate the movement from early scientific, scientific discoveries into translational medicine. Um, so it's a real novel uh, partnership in R&D. But these partnerships aren't limited to R&D. So we've also been engaging in partnerships to try to tackle some of the most complex global health issues. And one that I'll share with you, an example that, that brings together multiple sectors, is something called Gavi, which is the Global Alliance for Vaccines. And Gavi was formed, it's a public partnership that was formed to bring affordable vaccines to low-income countries. And it started with a grant from the Gates Foundation, but it also involves funding from uh, governments, uh, UN agencies are involved, the vaccine manufacturers are involved, and civil society are involved. And they all play a very important role. And the way it works is the funders pool the money together and they use something called an advanced market commitment to purchase in bulk 
vaccines from the manufacturers who are able, because of the bulk purchasing, apply, uh, provide the medicines at non-commercial prices for use in these low-income markets. Um, it's a really innovative partnership. It involves multiple sectors to come together to make it work. In terms of the impact it's had, you know, this is an, a picture from a Gavi site in Africa where you know, women will, will walk five miles just to bring their children to get vaccinated. When they get there, they're able to get their child vaccinated in a, in a clean environment with a safe, efficacious, and high-quality vaccine that just wouldn't have been accessible without this program. To date, almost 600 uh, immunizations have taken place under the program. Estimated 8 million lives have been saved. Um, from our end, we've committed to donate over 700 million doses of our Prevnar 13 pneumococcal vaccine as part of the program. Um, in terms of the economic impact, Health Affairs did an article about this program recently, and they estimated for every dollar spent on the immunization, the health system saves $18 in health care costs, lost wages, lost productivity. So a major success. So those are two established partnerships that we've been engaged in. Thinking in the future in terms of some of the emerging challenges that we're trying to address through partnerships, we just launched at uh, Davos last year a new program called Access Accelerated, which is a partnership between 23 global pharmaceutical companies, the World Bank, and the Union for International Cancer Control. And the whole objective of this partnership is try to address the growing burden of non-communicable diseases in low and lower middle income markets. The, um, Diseases like cancer, respiratory disease, diabetes, mental health disorders uh, have a, a massive growing burden in all markets around the world. And in fact, they're the leading cause of death. I think 38 million deaths attributable, attributable to non-communicable diseases. So when the United Nations SDGs came out last year, the private sector is trying to step up and create a framework for treating these non-communicable diseases, building off partnerships like Gavi, working in with partnership with institutions like the World Bank and others to try to create a framework for treating these diseases. In terms of bringing it closer to home, uh, you know, I don't think I've gone to a conference or a meeting that hasn't discussed health care reform, and we're all interested in what's happening with health care reform in the U.S. And while we have the best health care in the world, we also have the most expensive health care in the world. We spend 17 percent of GDP on health care, it's expected to go up to over 20 percent in the next five years. Um, and we have a major health problem. We have the highest obesity rate in the OECD, 15 percent of Americans smoke, um, 75 percent of Americans don't get enough exercise. We have a health problem as well. And, you know, in thinking about what the government is or is not going to do in health care, I don't think patients or the health care sector can afford to wait to have the government fix the problem because, frankly, whatever they do, I don't think it'll fix the full problem. So I, you know, our company, we're talking to others in the sector, to healthcare plans, to PBMs, to provider groups, trying to find areas where we have a common interest and a, and a common goal, trying to develop private sector solutions to some of these healthcare problems. So I'm out of time, but I just, I, I wanted to just run through a few of these examples to share with you the way we're approaching these partnerships, and we, and we are trying to reach out across sectors, so beyond pharmaceutical industry to other industries to try to address some of these problems here and at home. But I think we, you know, we have to think about how can we come together as a healthcare community to solve these problems and not try to do it in isolation. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the meeting.